China continues to have some of the most strict COVID regulations in the world. However, following nationwide protests against its rigorous COVID zero policy, the government subsequently reduced its pandemic regulations. China stated last week that it would no longer need inbound tourists to undergo quarantine beginning January 8th, a significant step toward loosening restrictions on its borders, which have been largely closed since 2020. But why the sudden change in regulations? What will happen to the protests that have been going on around China? And what does it mean for the rest of the world? China has been swiftly relaxing the severe COVID regulations that have been in place since early 2020, following November protests that presented the Chinese mainland's largest show of public discontent since President Xi Jinping took power in 2012. His subsequent quick shift on the restrictions, which has damaged the $17 trillion economy, means the virus is now spreading mostly unchecked across the country of 1.4 billion people. Over the weekend, the National Health Commission, or NHC, declared that it would no longer be posting daily COVID data, and official figures revealed only one COVID death in the seven days leading up to Monday, fueling suspicions among health experts and citizens about the government's data. The figures contradict the experiences of considerably smaller countries once they reopen. According to reports, hospitals across China have become overcrowded, spreading the virus swiftly among frontline medical professionals. Recently, Chinese doctors told Reuters that their hospitals had been overwhelmed with up to six times the typical number of patients, the majority of whom were elderly. Local media claimed that the Peking and Tsinghua universities in Beijing had issued a growing number of obituary notices of largely older staff and faculty members over the past month, indicating that the death toll from COVID is also rising. Meanwhile, Chinese residents have flocked to book travel abroad as authorities remove the final major pillar of the country's zero COVID policy amid reports of hospital overcrowding across the country. The world's second largest economy's decision to open its borders, combined with a lack of data transparency, has alarmed some of China's regional neighbors. Fumio Kishida, Japan's prime minister, announced that all visitors from China would be required to undergo COVID testing as a precautionary measure. Those who test positive will be quarantined at specified facilities for seven days, and their samples will be used for genome analysis. The Japanese government also intends to reduce the number of flights to China. There are growing worries in Japan, Kishida said. We have decided to take a temporary special measure to respond to the situation. China's lack of information and transparency was making it impossible to devise safety measures. He said there were large differences between information from national and local governments and between the government and private organizations. According to data from the Chinese travel platform Sea Trip, searches for popular cross-border destinations jumped tenfold within half an hour of the quarantine announcement on Monday night. According to Sea Trip, the most popular destinations were Macau, Hong Kong, Japan, Thailand, and South Korea. Outbound flight bookings were up 254% from the day prior, according to Trip.com data. Traveling to China is also becoming more popular. Bookings for inbound flights to mainland China rose 412% Tuesday morning from the previous day, according to Trip.com data. Many members of the Chinese diaspora around the world, especially international students, have been barred from entering due to tight quarantine rules and haven't seen family or friend in years. While many in China rejoiced at loosening travel restrictions, many more were hurrying to obtain medical supplies to combat COVID. Authorities have implemented efforts to appropriately allocate medical resources, such as requisitioning medical supply production. According to state media, nurses and doctors have been urged to work, while sick and retired medical professionals in rural communities have been rehired to assist. Some places are facing great pressure at hospital emergency wards and intensive care units, an NHC official Jiayue Yuhui told reporters. The country's banking and insurance regulator announced on Tuesday that it would increase financial assistance to small and private enterprises in the catering and tourism sectors, which were among the hardest hit by the pandemic. The scarcity of COVID-related drugs in China has triggered a rush for painkillers in neighboring Taiwan. Two Taiwanese who work in Beijing and Shenzhen and are on vacation in Taipei told The Guardian that when they return to the mainland in a few weeks, they plan to load up on Panadol and other pain relievers. In response to rising demand, Taiwan's government considered imposing a ban on bulk purchases of certain painkillers, but the head of the country's Food and Drug Administration told reporters that the authority would not impose a mandatory ban after meeting with representatives from pharmacies and retailers. Now, as many Chinese residents celebrate a relaxation of lockdown restrictions that have crippled businesses and fueled unemployment, 
Some demonstrators detained by China's security apparatus face an uncertain fate. While some protesters were freed with a warning, some human rights lawyers and academics point to President Xi Jinping's tough stance on dissident over the last decade, warning of additional harassment and prosecution. Squaring the accounts after the autumn harvest is the party's way of dealing with people who have betrayed it, said Lynette Ong, a University of Toronto professor, referring to the practice of delaying score settling until the time is right. In a statement that did not refer to the protests, the Communist Party top body in charge of law enforcement agencies said China would crack down on the infiltration and sabotage activities of hostile forces and would not tolerate any illegal and criminal acts that disrupt social order. When asked about the protests, Chinese foreign ministry stated that rights and freedoms must be practiced in accordance with the law. Reuters was able to determine how many protesters are still being held by police. Social media requests for information on the whereabouts of a few missing protesters are still active. The protests, widely regarded as a tipping point toward loosening restrictive COVID restrictions, mainly died down in several cities when police were mobilized heavily on the streets. The consequences of protesting in China have grown in recent years, with the Ministry of Public Security introducing guidelines two years ago that have been used by local authorities to prohibit protesters from working as tour guides or insurance agents, as well as making it more difficult for their family members to obtain government-related jobs. According to Zhang Dongshou, a Beijing-based lawyer who has previously handled human rights cases, the levels of penalty for protesting in China vary greatly. Those found to be bystanders may face a modest fine and up to 15 days in jail, whereas violent altercations with police may result in jail terms for breaking public order or picking quarrels and causing trouble. Those who yelled slogans calling for Xi's or the Communist Party's expulsion, as seen at a number of protests across China, might face more serious charges of inciting or engaging in the subversion of the state, which carries a maximum sentence of life in prison, according to Zhang. Irio, a Shanghai protester, detained after attempting to stop police from arresting a fellow protester, said that during her interrogation, police specifically asked if anyone had distributed blank A4 sheets of paper, a defining symbol of these protests, as well as the identities of protest organizers. The police said there would be no punishment for all of us this time, but may call us back after further investigation, she told Reuters on an encrypted messaging app. Police asked Eero and the other protesters Reuters talked with to sign letters of repentance, with some of them being asked to read the letters out while being filmed. Thousands were arrested during Hong Kong's pro-democracy, anti-China rallies in 2019, but only later charged with rioting and subversion, and many are still in legal proceedings. I probably won't go protesting again in the short term, Eero said. Everyone was impulsive this time and had no experience. We hadn't prepared well, and no mature organization and communication platform could unite and organize everyone. According to one senior EU official, Xi blamed the unrest on teenagers disgruntled by the virus during a meeting with European Council President Charles Michael last week in Beijing. According to Alfred Wu, assistant professor at Singapore's Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, a stronger crackdown is only more likely if authorities feel the protests are organized and political in nature rather than leaderless and spontaneous. They just sprang up organically because people were driven by a sense of hopelessness and desperation about the never-ending COVID restrictions, Wu said. Even with the COVID loosening measures, some people's demand for more political freedoms remains intact. I don't think this is good news or a victory in our struggle because we ask for liberty, said Eero. Despite the threat of future repercussions from authorities, Eero expressed no regrets. It was worth it. It allowed me to personally see the Communist Party's control over our speech and to see how the freedom of the people under its rule is deeply restricted.